Hey guys, it's Morgan. Welcome back to another weekly schlog here at Highland Cycles, where we're going to show you a whole bunch of cool dirt bike stuff. We got Angry Zach over there, valving suspension. Leander's up there talking to people on the phone. And I'm back here talking to you guys on YouTube. If you're new here, make sure you stick around for the whole video. Check it out. See what we show you. It's a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun here. Um, we're just a small dirt bike shop in Colorado, and now I'm in trouble because Leander's after me. Someone on your messaging on Instagram, you told him to call first thing in the morning about a call. All right. Anyway, if that sounds like fun, here we go. Right, guys so first on the lift is this tire and another tire um these are off of definitely a ktm i know i'm not sure <laughs> they brought the wheels in like i said it's definitely a ktm but I'm not sure what which one doesn't really matter they have mooses in them and this lady would like them softer uh she i don't know if she installed them or had them installed but they're super stiff and actually if you push on them man they don't move at all they are crazy stiff so she wants us to um fix that so if you guys have checked out the drilling the moose balls video we're gonna do that we're gonna drill this i think these are actually just a whole moose it's not moose balls so we're gonna take that tire off take the moose out we're gonna drill it kind of do our own little recipe of that put it back in and we got front one to do too so yeah let's do this all right guys after a serious battle i got the tire off uh, and I figured out why they're so stiff. So this is a Michelin moose, which are good mooses and usually definitely uh, squishier. But it is huge. You can see how far... There we go. See how far it's holding that bead apart? That is crazy. So this thing is definitely the wrong size. And probably what happened is they've got this IRC M5B, which is a great tire. Um, but it's a soft terrain tire, which usually means the rubber's a little harder. By the way, guys, that is a thing. Soft terrain means soft, loose sand or uh, loose dirt, whatever. And usually that means that the compound of the tire is stiffer, uh, the carcass and the knobs and everything, so that it digs into that soft terrain better and gets a better hookup so soft terrain does not mean it's going to be a squishy tire um so they i don't know if they intended that probably not uh but then also they got a 120 let's see so it's a 120 but it's a one there we go it's a 120 but it's a 120 80 so it's wide but it's short this way so all of those things together are leading up to this thing being crazy. It was like a rock in there, <laughs> man. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna yank this thing out. We're gonna drill all kinds of holes in this thing. Let me go grab the drill. All right, guys, after my last uh, moose drilling video, you guys had some great uh, suggestions. One is put it on top of a box so you can just drill through. You're not going to worry about hitting um, any kind of you know metal or whatever. Also, some silicone spray on the drill. So I like those. Those are great suggestions. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by drilling holes this way. All right, guys, there we go. First round of holes drilled. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in from the outside and drill in between each of these to really soften this thing up because it is not going to be much easier yet. Um, so, yep, going to do a whole bunch more holes. Boom. There we go, guys. Hopefully this is gonna be nice and squishy. So let's mount this thing back up and see how bad it is. 
All right, guys. So it's still obviously filling up the tire a lot, but I'm hoping that the added squishiness is going to make a big difference on install. We'll find out here real soon. You guys might be noticing there's a valve stem over here and you're wondering what the heck is that some of you guys know but a lot of folks do that with their mooses so that when the moose is worn out not like this one <laughs> but when the moose is worn out they don't like to uh, uh, seat the bead when you uh, put a new tire on so they do that to help you can blast air in there and get the bead to seat so uh, this shouldn't need it, <laughs> but so that went actually not bad. Well, that actually went just fine. I think this tire is going to be way better set up for her now. Still gonna be stiff at first. Um, she's gonna have to go ride it, but it's definitely gonna be way better because that was much easier than the removal would have indicated. <laughs> definitely still stiff, but that's gonna be way, way, way better. Really happy with that. I got a front one to do. Uh, probably just gonna drill holes in the sides of that one, not down in the top. Uh, and then we'll have this thing all softened up. Oh, nice. <laughs> I like drilling out mooses mainly because I like to put the little, what do we call those? Moose holes, they're like donut holes, but moose holes. I don't know, but I like throwing them at Zach and putting them in different places, <laughs> which is awesome. I think he likes it too. He's just acting like he doesn't. All right, guys, next on the lift is this KTM 690. We are trying to make the wheels tubeless, not T-U-B-L-I-S-S, -S, but actually tubeless. Uh, our customer bought this kit. I'm not sure where it's from. Autex Clear Tubeless Kit. Um, front and rear set, KTM 690, blah, 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 any, all the things. So we're going to be learning. Uh, so I figured I'd bring you guys along with us. Um, one thing that Dan said you got to make sure you do is you got to grind these, uh, the nubbins on the spoke nipples down to make sure that it's nice and smooth. So we're going to do that. Um, yeah, but if that sounds fun, stick with us here as we go uh, digging into this thing and learn how it works. All right, guys, so as with anything that involves any kind of adhesive, <laughs> the preparation is where it's at. Uh, that is what is gonna be super, super important in getting this thing right. Uh, so first we gotta clean, like clean, 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 and then we've gotta grind any kind of welds or any imperfections, and we have to grind the nipples on this down uh, till they're nice and flat. It's got a picture, I'm not gonna, find the picture anyway so um yeah i'm gonna get my uh my die grinder out with an abrasive wheel i'm gonna go around the whole thing once with that i'll show you that real fast uh and then i've got a um i don't know i might use i've got a dremel that has a stone on it that might be the easiest way to get these uh nipples down but i'll get that here after we're done getting this all clean uh, and then, yeah, then it's got some double stick tape. I'm actually gonna let's pull this apart here. I think, yeah. So 
So this is the double stick tape. This is the sheet, like the thing that sticks to it. And there's some plugs. Valve stems. So I think the plug. I think the plugs are for uh, these plugs. And they may just be a little bit bigger, makes it seal a little bit better. I'm not sure, but we'll check that out. I washed this bike and then it clearly wasn't clean enough. So I got a little more washing to do on the wheel, uh, some brake clean to do, and then some grinding. So I'm gonna start with the grinding and I'll wash at the end because I'm just gonna get crap all over it anyway. So yeah, let's go get a die grinder. Use this like little abrasive wheel to go around and just kind of <laughs> Get everything off. <laughs> All right, guys, we got everything buzzed down uh, with the flapper wheel, gone over again with that abrasive wheel, brake clean, soap, water air dryer with the hose we got it super super good i feel really good about how clean it is and all that now we got to stick these little guys to cover up the spoke nipples these are like little uh um just barriers to help these not tear through the lining so we're gonna put these on first all right got all those on there now we got a double stick tape it's got a smooth um uh, side out here so we're going to put it on and then we take that off to get the actual uh, band on kind of easy at first not going too crazy with pushing it in because we're going to come back with a heat gun and make sure that this thing sticks Okay, now guys, here comes what I think is going to be one of the keys to this whole thing working really well. In my experience of putting graphics on stuff, especially curvy stuff that's not flat, the heat gun and being patient is one of the keys of this thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this nice and hot and we're just going to go around and just make sure that this really sticks down in there. And what this heat gun allows you to do is really stretch that adhesive down in between the spokes and on the sides and make sure it's really stuck. You want to be careful if you're using an actual heat gun. You can definitely overheat the thing and melt everything. You don't want that. Let's take our valve stem. Take all of this off. We got a hole here drop that through now what they want us to do is check this before we take the the release paper off i'm going to check it come down and make sure that this falls in between two nipples which it does okay so then we're going to cut it when we get back around and we just don't want it on um let's see actually i'm gonna go this way put it a little further away from the other joint okay so you see guys, so we want to put this in here, check to make sure that this lands between two nipples. That's good. Uh, Cause we're going to come back around and we're going to butt it up there and we don't, a little gap's okay, but we don't want it um, to uh, overlap and we want it in between them. So that looks good. Now we can take the protective cover off, being very careful not to get anything on it 
Now comes the patience. All right, guys, it says once you're done with this, key is to uh, get this thing on here as fast as possible. So we got a brand new uh, Moto Z tie to put on this thing. Let's go get it on here. Gonna use some Murphy's tire mounting stuff to get this thing nice and slippery. Tighten down the valve stem, but you want to be careful because if you tighten it too far, it can bust up the the what we just did on there. Uh, so now, let's see if we can get this bead to seat. There we go. Maybe. All right, I was a little bit worried about that. That's just the nature of tubeless tires, but what you can do is take the valve core out and just blast in there with a normal air gun. Makes it go in way faster. I think we got our seat in, so now hopefully that doesn't go back down. Sweet, so it's holding air right now. We're gonna. I gotta look at the instructions again. I think it says to put a whole bunch of air in it. I got 40 pounds in it now. I think they want you to put a bunch in because that air helps to push that seal like it, it, actually down this way onto the rim um, and then help you know make it more permanent. Just one second. All right, guys, it says 2.5 bar, which is right at about 40 pounds. So I'm going to check it with my digital gauge. It says to leave it for three hours and recheck it again. All right, digital gauge says 39.5. I'm gonna shove it off to the side. Uh, and then, I don't know. Can't really take the front wheel off of this thing right now the way I've got it set up. So uh, I got other things I gotta do to this bike. Uh, otherwise, we'll probably just come back tomorrow. If this works, then we'll go do the front. All right, so I let the wheel sit overnight and it held some pressure, but not all the pressure. I kind of was worried about that because the way the system works, you, you got to get those nipples ground down. And even with them ground down, it just with the way the drop center is, it's so steep in there. It just doesn't make a good seal. Uh, this is really built for, if you look at the pictures, you can see it's built for more things that are more flat across, not this wheel. I mean, it's it says it's for these wheels in this bike, and it is. And maybe if you spent forever grinding those things down and made them just perfect, maybe you'd get it to seal perfectly. That's okay though, because we are going to put some of this orange sealant in this thing. Um, this stuff is awesome. It's just like stands. It's a little bit better version of it, I think. Um, so yeah, we're going to dump this whole bottle in there <laughs> uh, through the valve stem, spin it around, air it up, put it back on the bike, go to do the front wheel. Uh, and then we got other things to do. Actually, I've got this uh, Rottweiler 
kit we're going to be putting on so i'll bring you guys along for that and um yeah this will take care of any kind of small leak um this stuff is good if you guys ever want to run any kind of sealant in a tube do something like this either stands or this or whatever version of this kind of latex stuff the slime does not work in a tube i've never seen slime like actually work in a tube it just it's made for tires that are hard and don't flex that much so this stuff is made for the really flexy stuff so here's the deal we are installing the rottweiler performance sas removal kit so it's the charcoal canister and the sas or pcv or ais valve whatever you want to call it it's a thing that dumps raw air and i think well, it might be filtered but anyway it dumps cold air into the exhaust tract so that it helps to burn extra fuel all it does is make a lean condition and make the bike not run that great so um, what we're going to do is we're going to follow all their instructions. The Rottweiler performance um, instructions are really good. Uh, the <coughs> SAS is right here. I'm not going to show you. They've got a great thing here, um, but I will show you what we're moving up close here. So that is the valve. That's what we're going to plug off. Um, that's where the air goes into. So this is the feeder valve is up here. So it is uh, filtered. It goes up in here on the backside of the filter. And then it allows air to come in and dump into the exhaust track right there, causing a lean condition, supposedly burning extra un unburnt fuel. And I guess maybe it does, but it's silly. It makes the bike get hot and all that stuff. So we're going to delete all that, cap everything off. Comes with really nice stuff. Um, the nice cap for that you can see that goes boop, there uh, this is a dongle here to make it so that the thing won't throw a code once you delete it these are the caps anyway all good stuff so I'm gonna do that if there's anything super interesting I'll bring you guys in but otherwise um, uh, we've got the rear tire all sealed up with uh, slime or stands orange seal excuse me orange seal uh, then we'll do the front uh, oh and then we're gonna Drop the forks down a little bit, or excuse me, rate, yeah, drop the forks down, raise the triple clamps up because he wants to see uh, if it makes a difference in handling. And then we also have a Mako 360 coming. It's not here yet, but that's coming for uh, the handlebars to give him a little more cush on this bike. And I think that's all. We're doing lots of cool stuff to this. These bikes are pretty cool. Um, yeah, I like these motorcycles. Uh, I like my XR. I like the style of my XR650 better. I like this because it's got a start, uh, start button and uh, fuel injection. <laughs> but um, yeah, these are sweet bikes. All right, we got everything taken off. We got our cool Rottweiler uh, block off plate. Canister's gone. The little, uh, P this PCV valve, SAS thing's all gone. Plugged off, dongles plugged in. Everything's ready to go. So that means this bike is gonna definitely be in my opinion, a lot more reliable because the less heat you can build, the better it is for the bike. Uh, so now I'm gonna put all that stuff back on. I'm gonna go ahead and take care of, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and spin this bike around, get the front wheel in the air, uh, and then I can take that front wheel off, do the tubeless setup on that, put the sealant in it just right off the bat, then I'm gonna raise his forks up, and then I think we're, uh, yeah, I think we're about done with his his job. We'll move on to the next thing. So I totally forgot that we are putting a recluse in this bike. <laughs> so we do have one more big job. And I figured I'd bring you guys along because this clutch is way different. Well, okay. It's not way different, but it's very different from uh, a normal KTM clutch. <clears throat> it's kind of a, yeah, it's an interesting design. Uh, and uh, probably a little bit different to install the recluse. It, the recluse basically works the exact same way it's just the clutch pack is set up a little different anyway let's take a look here so we've got this the hub the inner hub is actually here well it's not an inner hub it's an outer hub <laughs> it's here and goes in that way i'll show you how we take this all apart but uh yeah it's very different we got this these are the four springs kind of an interesting situation to only have four springs on such a big clutch, on such a powerful bike, such a heavy bike, I'm kind of surprised. Um, it must work fine for him, so that's cool. Uh, it's, this is made by Adler in Italy for um, KTM. So it's power torque clutch. So interesting. Let's uh, let's take it apart. 
I was reading the recluse um, instructions and it's it's definitely different. So the whole thing is trying to walk out. <laughs> so we'll see how this goes. Hopefully I don't drop it all in the oil pan. I don't think I will, but you never know. All right, so the recluse comes with all new springs. But we're going to save all this stuff. Obviously, you give back to the customer, but then just in case. So it's a 30 millimeter. So if we can't hold it. That's cool, you can actually just hold it in your hand. They got some serious thread locker on there, so they must not trust that tab lock washer. What up? Alright, so there's an inner hub and an outer hub on this clutch. This is really funky. All right, guys, so what we do is we take the clutch back off outer hub, judder spring, and lining plate out. Now, this goes here. And unlike most KTM stuff, we are going to install a friction disc first. Normally, KTMs go steels, but uh, this one is different. So we go friction and you want to line up the fingers on the friction discs with uh, with each other so that this all goes together. Later you'll see this is a little more complicated than a normal recluse install. So we go drive plate, Let's alternate. And I soak these guys in oil so and the EXP disc so that they'll be nice and lubed up for when we install and start this thing up. And finish with the EXP. All right, now we're going to take these springs, put them on these little holes. I'll show you guys here in just a second. They sit down, there's little recesses in each one of those little ears. So guys, important here. So there's an arrow there. And I know that it's lined up with this upper hole. So we're learning as we do this, guys. This is definitely different and then we got an arrow here we need to line that up there we go now we need to flip this thing over then recluse gives us these these are assembly screws that are just to help kind of hold the thing together and make this thing easier to um, install without everything coming apart and try to you know make sure you get all this aligned that's the other thing about not having these too tight because if these are probably not perfect perfect until you slide them in so you want to you want to keep these just snug enough that they don't slide around and come up you know come out of their grooves but not so tight that you can't move them all right now recluse gives us these sleeves that are going to go into uh, the outer basket. I'll show you. So they go in like this. And we just put them all the way around and it helps to protect this from these really thin little plates. These plates are super thin uh, and they will jack up this basket uh, really quickly if we run it without these. So I'm going to go put these things in and I'll be right back. 
All right, guys, real quick. Um, so as we're getting ready to install the inner hub and outer hub, one of the hubs in here, I um, just want to quick mention this thrust washer. This is a three-piece thing. This piece that you can see is cupped, and it goes over two clamshell pieces that go into a groove. Make sure you guys get that right. Just take your time. I had to put some grease on it to hold the little clamshells in there. Just make sure you get that right, because if you don't, this whole thing doesn't work and you got, you're gonna have real problems. We gotta reinstall our throw out. Take our recluse springs and install those. this little whatever you call this thing that goes with the pressure plate and we're gonna install this nice and like try to make it even going on all right once we get these all tight then we're gonna torque them down to like six foot pounds not much all right we got to remove these install screws that recluse sent us Uh, once we get that done, we'll go around and put the slave cylinder on. It should be the same normal process of bleeding the slave, but we'll, I'll bring you guys in and show you. All right, guys, so slave cylinder is just like every other slave cylinder, except that the line screws into it instead of having a banjo bolt. But other than that, it's the same. So I'm not going to show you the install. Uh, we're going to bleed it. I'll show you the, the, the setting of how to... Uh, get the right free play gain because that's bears repeating all the time. It seems like a lot of people either forget or just don't know how to do that. So I'll get that done, but let me get this installed and I'll show you guys what that looks like. All right, guys. So we got the clutch all bled. It's interesting. You cannot get to the adjuster without the cover, the sprocket cover off. And unfortunately that means you cannot get that bolt in there to hold it tight. So you have to really tighten these down to make sure it's nice and flat while you're adjusting it. Um, so I turned it in until it got stiff, like it butted up against the throw out and then one full turn plus two clicks. And I think we're good. Let's try it. So first of all, first test is Obviously in gear, still running. It tensioned the chain, which is good. I like that. That means that it's just a little bit of drag on it. Now we're gonna do the test. We're gonna rev it and see if it comes into an eighth to a sixth or sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. So we take the free play up. Oh, still in gear. All right, so take the free play up. That's right where I like it. All right, guys, that's the end of the week, end of the schlog. Thank you so much for joining me. We actually had a whole bunch of footage uh, from a couple other things that we did this week that I just didn't put in there. If you guys want to see that, comment below. Uh, we had a DRZ 400, uh, another KTM 300. We did moose balls. Anyway, a few things. If you guys want to see that, let me know. I'll make a separate video with those things. Um, they're, I don't know, they just weren't as interesting as the other stuff. So uh, if you guys want to see it, let me know. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I love you guys so much. If you are brand new here, maybe consider hitting the subscribe button. Hit the little notification bell so that you don't miss any videos. And uh, yeah, tell your friends about us. Share this thing around. We're trying to grow this thing into the biggest dirt bike channel on YouTube. And I know we can get there with your guys' help. I love you. We'll see you on the next one.